In this video, you will learn how to solve rate, time, and distance problems. There are three different types of problems that we'll discuss in this video. The first is when you're dealing with motion in opposite directions. The second is when you have motion in the same direction. And the third one is when you're dealing with round trips. So first, dealing with motion in opposite directions. We have bicyclists, Ricky and Bryant, starting at noon from points 50 miles apart from each other, and then rode towards each other. And they meet at 2.30 p.m. Ricky's speed was three miles per hour greater than Bryant's speed. And the question is asking to find their speeds. So the first thing you want to do with all these problems is draw a sketch. By drawing a sketch, you can help visualize what is actually happening in the problem. So here we have Ricky and Bryant, and they're starting 50 miles from each other and going towards each other. So Ricky would be maybe going to the right, and Bryant we can represent as going to the left. All right, and then they're going to meet somewhere in the middle. And we could even label this as being 50 miles. So this entire distance is 50 miles. So with these motion problems, we want to use our formula for distance. And our distance formula is rate times time equals distance. And we're going to use this formula to answer the question at hand. So we have two different people, Ricky and Bryant. And it's helpful if we create a table showing both of their different speeds and the time and the distance that they travel. So we know that rate times time equals distance. So rate times time equals distance. Um, okay, so we can make a little table out of this where this column is our rate, this column is our table, or time, sorry, and then the last column is your distance. All right, and then from here, we're gonna have two rows. The first row will be Ricky, and the second row will be Bryant. Now what we do from here is we fill in the table with information that is given to us. So the rate that Ricky travels. Um, we know Ricky's speed was three miles an hour greater than Bryant's speed. So if we let Bryant's speed be x, then Ricky's speed is three miles an hour greater. So we take Bryant's speed of x and then add three to it and that is Ricky's speed, or his rate. Okay, and then the time, they started at noon, which is 12 o'clock, and they met at 2.30. So the time that they traveled would be the same. They both started at noon, and they both met at 2.30. The time difference between those would be two and a half hours or 2.5. So both of their time was 2.5. Now the distance is found by taking the rate times the time. So if we take 2.5 and multiply it by x plus 3, that would give me the distance that Ricky traveled. Bryant, same thing. We take rate times time x times 2.5, or 2.5 times x, same thing. So here we have created a table. Now with this table, I can use this to create my equation. So the equation in this case will use the one piece of information that we've not used already, and that is the total distance is 50 miles. And if we were to add Ricky's distance with Bryant's distance, that total is 50. All right, so what I can do is I can add 
Ricky's distance right here, the 2.5 times x plus 3. Add that with Brian's distance of 2.5x. And at this time, I'm going to switch over to what I have typed up here in the slides. Um, so we are adding, like I said, Ricky's distance with Brian's distance. So we add the 2.5 times r plus 3, add that with the 2.5 times r. And here I use r instead of x, same thing. Um, so from here I can solve. So those are added together equaling 50, and now I can solve. So I distribute the 2.5, so 2.5 times r, plus 2.5 times 3. That's going to be 2.5r plus 2.5 times 3 is 7.5. And add that with 2.5r over here. That's equal to 50. And then from here, I can combine like terms. So 2.5r plus 2.5r would equal 5r. And then plus 7.5 equals 50. So to solve, I can subtract 7.5. So this will cancel. I have 5r on the left equals 42.5 on the right, and then divide both sides by 5. So r, in this case, would equal 8.5. So r, which is Bryant's speed, or his rate, is 8.5. So this is Bryant. And then Ricky is that plus 3. So Ricky would be traveling at 11.5 miles per hour. All right, so your answers are 8.5 miles per hour for Bryant and 11.5 miles per hour for Ricky. So the first type of problem deals with motion in different directions. The second type of problem is with motion in the same direction. So here we see an example of that. We are told that Eldridge and Gabe are going on a kayaking trip. Eldridge starts 20 minutes later than Gabe. Gabe travels down the river at 6 miles per hour, and Eldridge travels at 8 miles per hour. And the question is how long does it take for Eldridge to catch up with Gabe? So the first thing you want to do is draw a sketch. So we have Eldridge and Gabe starting at the same point. Eldridge is going down the river, and Gabe is going down the same river. All right, so from here, we can kind of get a picture of what's going on. Now we want to set up a table with information that we know. So we are going to use our distance formula, rate times time equals distance. So rate times time equals distance. And then we have Gabe, and we have Eldridge. So E for Eldridge, and then G for Gabe. So we make ourselves a table with this information. All right, so it's going to look something like this. So from here, I need to fill in the table with information that we know. So we know that Gabe is going 6 miles per hour. So Gabe, his rate is going to be 6. And then Eldridge is going at 8 miles per hour. So Eldridge's rate is going to be 8. And then from here, we need to figure out the time. So Eldridge starts 20 minutes later than Gabe. All right, so what I can do is I can let Eldridge, his time be the letter T. Actually, let's use X instead, so we'll use X. If Eldridge travels for X amount of time, we know that Gabe would have traveled 20 minutes longer than Eldridge because Eldridge doesn't leave until after the first 20 minutes. So Gabe travels for a longer period of time, and that's 20 minutes longer. So 20 minutes, uh, we need to write this in hours. So the time should be in hours. So 20 minutes, and there's 60 minutes in an hour. So 20 divided by 60 would give me 1 over 3 hours. So Gabe's time is 
x plus one third of an hour. So from here, I can then fill in the distance column. I take rate times time. So for Eldridge, it would be eight times x. For Gabe, it's gonna be six times the entire quantity of x plus one over three. So don't forget the parentheses. Now from here, I have the table filled in. I can then set up my equation. So the equation is going to be based off this distance column. So looking at the distance column right here, um, we need to see in this specific scenario, what do we know about the distance? Well, the distance for Eldridge and Gabe will be the same because when Eldridge catches up with Gabe, the distance traveled would be the same distance. The time is different, but the distance will be the same. So what that means is that the distance Eldridge travels will be equal to the distance that Gabe travels. So that will be my equation. The distance Eldridge travels, which is 8x, is equal to the distance Gabe travels, which is 6 times x plus 1 over 3. So from here I can solve the equation. To begin, I distribute the 6, so I have 6 times x plus 6 times 1 third. 6 times 1 third would be 2, because 1 third of 6 would be 2. So from here I can then solve. I can bring the x's together, so I'll bring the 6x to the left side by subtracting. On the right side, the 6x's will cancel, and I'm left with 2 over here. And then on the left side, 8x minus 6x would be 2x's. So I have 2x equals 2. Now to get rid of the 2, I need to do the opposite of multiplying, which is divide. So divide both sides by 2. I have x on the left, then 2 over 2, which is 1 on the right. So x equals 1, which is the time that Eldridge traveled. So he traveled for one hour. And then Gabe would have traveled for one hour plus one third of an hour. So one and one third hour. And remember that one third hour was the 20 minutes. So we can say that Gabe traveled for one hour and 20 minutes. All right, so that would be my answer. One hour for Eldridge, and then one hour, 20 minutes for Gabe. So we've covered two different types of problems. One, where the distance is in the different directions. The second is when the distance is in the same direction. And the third type is when you're dealing with round trips. So for example, we are told that a ski lift carried Calvin up a slope at the rate of four miles per hour. And he skied back down parallel to the lift at 13 miles per hour. The round trip took 45 minutes. And the question is how far did he ski and for how long? So the first thing you want to do is draw a sketch. So we have him going downhill, then going back uphill. So when he went downhill, he would be going in, let's say, this direction. When the ski lift is carrying him uphill, he's starting at the same point down here, but now he's going all the way back up. So the distance will be the same, it's just one is going down and the other is going up the hill. Now from here, it's gonna be helpful to create a table. And the table is going to have our distance formula, which says rate times time equals distance. So we have that formula, and we have two scenarios. We have going downhill, then going uphill. So we have uphill and then down. All right, so now we need to fill in this table. So here, the rate is gonna be pretty easy because it gives us the rate. So when he's going up the hill, 
he's going at four miles per hour. Down the hill, his rate is going to be 13 miles per hour. Now the hard part is going to be getting the time. So we know the total time was 45 minutes. And the question is how far did he ski and for how long? So the skiing part is going to be going downhill. All right, because you ski down the hill. So the question is, what is this right here? So we'll call this x. Now, if he traveled for 45 minutes, and we're trying to find how long it took him to go up the hill on the ski lift, what I do is I take 45 minus the time that he takes traveling down. So for example, if he traveled uh, downhill for, let's say, 10 minutes, and he, and he um, was on the hill for a total of 45, so going down the hill was 10 minutes, that means going up the hill would be 45 minus 10, which would be 35. So whatever his time going down the hill is, I subtract that value from 45. So the time going up the hill is 45 minutes minus x. So 45 minus x is the equation I want up here for time. The only thing is 45 minutes, we need to put this into hours. So 45 minutes would be the same thing as 45 over 60, 60 minutes in one hour. And that can reduce, and that would give me 3 over 4. So what I have instead is actually 3 over 4 minus x. So that's what's going to go here, 3 over 4 minus x. So then we can find the distance column because we take rate times time. So for going up the hill, we have 4 times 3 fourths minus x. For going down the hill, we have rate times time, 13 times x, which is 13x. So we filled in the table. Now we can use this to set up our equation. So we're going to look at this distance column. So the distance going up the hill and down the hill, the relationship between those is that the distance will be the same. All right, so what I can do is I can set uh, the distance up the hill four times three over four minus x, set that equal to the distance down the hill, which is 13 times x. And now that we have the equation, we can solve. So to solve, I want to begin by distributing the four. Four times three over four, so we'll do that up here, four or four over one times three over four would give me 12 over four, which would equal three. So this would be three, and then minus four times x, which is four x, and that's equal to 13 x. And now from here, I need to get x on the same side. So I want to bring this negative 4x to the right side. And I do that by adding 4x. When I do that, the 4x's cancel over here. I have 3 on the left, and then 17x on the right. And then to finish off, I need to get rid of the 17 with the x. And I do that by dividing. So the 17's cancel. I have x equaling 3 over 17. If I take 3 divided by 17, I'm going to get 0.176, and this is in hours. Now this is kind of nebulous, like what is 0.176 of an hour? So what I can do is I take this and convert to minutes, and I can do that by multiplying by 60. So if I take 0.176 times that by 60, I get 0, 36 carry the 3, 45 carry the 4, that would be 10, and then 3 decimals here, so I move the decimal over 1, 2, 3 places to get 10.56 minutes. So x is 10.56 minutes, that is the time it takes him to go down the hill. So he goes down for 10.56 minutes. So that is the answer to how long it took him to travel. 
so 10 and a half minutes approximately. And then also ask for how, or sorry, for how far did he travel? So this is his rate, now we want his distance. So to find the distance, we just plug this in for distance. So we take 13 times his time traveled. All right, so I just erase everything that we don't need. And all we need is to plug his time in here for x, because his distance is 13 times x. Now we want to make sure we refer back to the hours when we're finding the time, uh, because this is 13 miles per hour. So we have 13 times 0.176. So when I multiply those together, 13 times 0.176, I'm going to get 2.288 as my distance, which can approximate to about 2.3 miles. So his ski trip was about 2.3 miles, and he traveled for about 10 and a half minutes total. And that concludes our lesson for today. We will see you next time.